A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. Maxwell Wasika is my name. This time around we want to speak about a very interesting conversation with a special person in sports development in the country, the game that has showed massive potential among Kenyan athletes across various sporting disciplines. I'm talking about Rafael Obonyo. Of course, Osoro Robert is still, with the, is still here with us. He has not vanished. And good to see you, Zoro, again. I'm good. I thought you disappeared. <laughs> you know, since Shabana <laughs> got promoted to FKF Premier League, you've been overexcited lately. Yeah, we have to be. It's we celebrating. To be. Yeah, we are, we are still celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you, Rafael. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, and it's a pleasure to be on, on the show. You keeping well? I'm doing very, very well. I can't complain, yeah. You see, when I was coming to the show in the morning, I have a friend of mine who keeps inquiring about how my running order looks like. So I told him I'm interviewing you, and uh, he was a bit surprised. When I questioned him why, he said he knows you very well, far away from sports. <laughs> Quite how many hats do you wear? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a sportsman per se, but all of us can contribute to sports development in different ways. And so what I try to do is to support sports and people who are in uh, sports, both in terms of uh, advocating for better policies uh, to ensure sports development, but also motivating and supporting uh, sportsmen and, uh, and women. So that's how I'm involved in sports. So I'm not signing for Manchester United or Arsenal or any of those teams. Yeah, yeah. And it was a good gesture in the midweek, you getting to award Kenyan tennis sensation, uh, Angelo Kutoi, and even Philemon Otieno Gourmaya captain after them winning 20th. Premier League title. What informed you of this move? First of all is my, my engagement in youth development. I strongly believe that uh, we cannot uh, succeed as a country unless we invest in the most important asset that we have and that is, uh, that is young people. So generally that's my motivation and inspiration to engage in, uh, I mean to support people like uh, Okutoi and, uh, and Philemon. But most importantly is that sports is an integral part of, uh, of development. If we invest in sports, then chances are we are going to grow and develop as a, as a country. And the third reason is just to motivate a, the, the emerging stars, you know, like Philemon or Okutoi, because uh, sports hasn't been easy. There are very few uh, uh, positive examples from this part of the world of people who've pursued spot, sports and succeeded because it, it entails huge sacrifice to the extent that people put in their own resources and many people who are even extremely talented uh, fall off the way because they feel like it's not there's no return on investment and so people like Okutoi who are upcoming people like uh, Philemon who a uh, Gormaya captain who helped the team to win uh, uh, the league these are people who need to motivate it so that they can also uh, bring up other people and also see some uh, some sort of uh, light at the end of the tunnel so that's part of what I try to do as an individual just to let them know that uh, uh, we, we, we value what they're doing and they should keep on keeping on, yeah. So I'm pretty sure you are in agreement with uh, his guest. It's a good step in the right direction, right? Yeah, very, very true because, you know, the major problem that we have as a country is that sports in Kenya is not professional. You look at a situation where you've got Angela, yes, now we're interacting with her here today and she's just one of many. And she's, after two, three years from now, people will not get in touch with Angela because she's going on to another level, to another level of sports. Because, you know, she's gone. That's the same way you'd keep Choge began. Yes. <laughs> uh, from now, when now she played Wimbledon, she is now a major winner in Wimbledon. From, that was the doubles. But give her time. She's maturing. She's getting on to the game. And at the moment, she's going to go to another level. And people will be like, hey, she's Kenyan, she's Kenyan. But the major point is she started from an amateur point and that is what people don't understand and people don't get it. In that when it got sports development and everything, as a country now the conversation should move from we need to move it from the amateur level to the professional level. Now those policies are supposed to be helping and now I will throw the hat to you. When you look at our scenario, when you look at our Kenyan system and the scenario is, you look at a system where the people, the hierarchies of the people who make decisions don't understand that. They don't want to understand that we need to move from an amateur level for sports to develop, for our youth 
to develop in sports, we need to move it from amateur to professional. And that's that's very true, uh, Osoro. Sorry to jump in. Yes, no, well. it's all right. I just want right. to say that uh, that's an important point, that as a country, we need a comprehensive plan, yes. which isn't there. We can't just be celebrating a player here, an athlete <laughs> yes. there, one person here, congratulating them. What we need to do is to have a comprehensive plan, more or less a master plan, yeah. on how to grow and develop sports in, uh, in, the, in the country. We can't just be waiting for someone to win something and then yes. we congratulate them. Yeah, yeah we need to, uh, like I said, a master plan yeah. and most importantly, a comprehensive policy, like Osoro did, uh, did point out. And not just a policy. If you look at Kenya, we have uh, policies, but they are quite fragmented and uncoordinated. So yeah. we need policies that are solid, but are also compact in a way that they are well, well coordinated. But beyond having a policy, we need to enforce and implement those policies. Because again, if you look at Kenya, we have a sports policy, just like we have in a couple of other countries like Ghana, Benin, yeah. and all that. But the problem has always been implementation. Yes. So are we able to develop policies which do not just create uh, ambitions, and yeah. aspirations but we are also able to do what it takes to implement this policy so execution becomes undoing and yes 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 <laughs> yeah, execution it, I think it, 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 it is a point where you get people who are given this mandate and they don't understand their mandate in development of sports and everything so you get a chance where you've got the cs the cabinet secretary for sports is in a policy making situation and he's supposed to do that now, the people under him also, they need to understand that and come in. You've got the education system. How is the education feeding on sports? How is the sports feeding on education? And I think that brings us to the government role in the development of sporting sector. You know, as sports consultants keep saying day in, day out that, you know, the role of government is not to fund uh, sporting federations, but to put in place a conducive environment that will enable sporting activities to thrive. What do you make, what's your overall assessment about government input in Kenyan sports? I think government in, input in Kenyan sport has been fairly dismal, if, if I was to, to analyze it in a very honest way. Yes. Uh, because one is, government needs to develop a policy, not necessarily to do the actual uh, bidding and investment in sports. But yes. you will find that uh, Kenyan government, like it is with a number of uh, African governments, they want to be seen to be the one investing in sports. And government does not have that capability and capacity. So what they need to do is to create an enabling environment for uh, civil society to, to invest in, uh, in sport or engage in sport. Private sector, uh, how do we encourage comp corporates, for example, to uh, uh, invest in sports? It's, for example, providing things like tax holidays, incentives, putting in place the right structures for a private sector, civil society to be able to support uh, uh, sports. That uh, hasn't, uh, hasn't happened uh, 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 to a large extent. And, and for me, I think government has fallen short when it comes to really um, uh, supporting sports. And also, uh, sports has to be seen not just as a, as a, a small, um, a department or a component of, um, of our development. It has to be integrated as part of the national development. Just look at what uh, uh, Rwanda has done with something like basketball. Sports now is bringing more resources to Rwanda than any other uh, investment you can talk, uh, talk of. Rwanda is now seen as a tourism a, a tourist country or a, a destination, destination yeah. because of sports. Look at what they've done with uh, setting, uh, I mean, building a basketball court. Rwanda was never known for basketball. Now everyone else uh, from Europe, from the US, uh, from other parts of the world are moving to Rwanda to, do, to play NBA, something that we should have done. We are struggling even with soccer stadiums here in, uh, in Kenya, a sport that truly uh, <laughs> uh, we know very well that there is enormous talent. So I think and we already submitted a bid for <laughs> joint African Cup of Nations hosting alongside other East African nations, Uganda Which? and Tanzania. <laughs> and you're not talking about the government input. There is also that aspect of administrators at the helm of our federations across disciplines, football, basketball, athletics you know there has been this argument that is never ending because when you speak to former players they say that you know they are the most suitable people to be at the helm of federations but when you speak to other people they say that you know it goes beyond having played the game because you just don't need uh, having been an athlete to be at the helm of 
Athletics Kenya because Patrick Motsepe, Continental of African Football President, is at the helm of uh, CAF, but he didn't play the sport. He's a mining magnet. You see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, actually the people who run the major sports in the world, I think we'll talk about Sebko. Yes. Lord Sebko. He's a lawyer. Mm. No, he actually, he was an athlete. I think he yes. broke an 800 meters, a two-mile record in the 80s. And now he's running a world athletics. That is just one off. You look at Platini, when he was the president of the UF, but he also played for France and he had that. But administration does not mean that you have to play the sport or you played the sport. It is just that people need your expertise for that game or for that it's just going on to any other institution and you can do the job kenya we have been in that we have put in a mechanism where people think that hey i played the sport i can be a leader but when you are given that chance you cannot do it i'm pretty sure when uh, <laughs> rafael uh, awarded uh, angelo kutoi and philemon otieno people at the helm of <laughs> federations <laughs> involved might start, you know, raising insecurity that, you know, this man wants to unseat them. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the, 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 the scary part is uh, most of our sports is from the international level, it comes uh, through the Olympics, it comes through the National Olympic Committee, and then it goes down now to the individual federations, oh, you've got tennis, You've got uh, basketball and all that. Now, the people now in these federations are the ones who need to come up with good plans to present them to government and government to appreciate that these plans can go forward. Now, for government, past the environment, they, we need to check one another. It's like a, a ba balances, a check on balances on what are you doing as government and what are we doing and are we bringing in this policy or this development to help these people and that is where we fail short and now the baddest thing or the one thing that where we go wrong is people now will look at the success of Philemon people will look at the success of Angela for you to award Angela you have to understand her story and that had to come from the sacrifice that Angela has put in on Actually, Raphael, tell us about, you know, what factors you had put into consideration before settling on the two. On the two. I, I mean, uh, first of all, just building on the point that Osoro was making, I think yes. poor governance has really yeah. messed our, our, our sports uh, sector. Uh, in this country and we need to fix that. We will not grow uh, sports unless we fix governance and uh, it goes beyond someone has having experience as a player or, a, or an athlete. That is an important ingredient but it's not the only ingredient because it's not coaching. It's more about management and yes, administration. Yeah. So we really need people with, uh, with vision and also with, with, uh, with skills. It's only that some of the professionals who've been given that opportunity have also done dismally. I've uh, squandered, the, have opportunity. squandered the opportunity. Yes. So everyone doubts that maybe they're not passionate enough about sports more than, but I think it's not that. I think it's just an issue of integrity. So we really need to get people of integrity and visionary people because we've seen that happen in various uh, 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 forms of, uh, of sports. And now in terms of awarding, Obonyo Foundation, I run a foundation called Obonyo Foundation. And every year we normally, I mean, we invest a lot in terms of uh, sports and education. And so on sports, we look at sports development because we truly believe that uh, while many people focus on education as um, being essential for development, sports can also provide and has provided ladder uh, uh, for development for many people. You look at people like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant didn't even go to college. Yes. Uh, he moved from high school to go and play uh, straight into the National um, Basketball uh, League. He's, uh, he, uh, I mean, he's gone now, but uh, he, done, he did very, very well. People like Michael, uh, I mean, Jordan and, and, and others. And even here, there are many other people who, uh, I mean, no one asks where Eliud Kipchoge went to school, you know, because, uh, I mean, that is not the track. He, he pursued a different track. So I strongly believe that we need to inspire many more young people to engage in, uh, in, uh, in sport. And so what do we look at? We look at something like determination. 
it's an important component. How has someone uh, 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 struggled and put in effort to get to where they are? If you, if you follow, no, I mean, I see many people talk about Okutoi now, but people don't know that Okutoi started playing when she was just uh, four four years old. I mean, she was brought up in the ghetto. Uh, she's an orphan. She was brought up by the, by the uncle. Look at how Okitoi has done so well for herself and for Kenya to move Kenya from position 11 to now the third, yeah. uh, third position for a sport that many people wouldn't even care. Even when they were playing here, very few people went to uh, to the, the Nairobi state, Club. Yes, yes, Nairobi Club to watch because we are not really uh, uh, so much informed about uh, tennis, but because of Fukutoi, now the world is focusing on Kenya as a tennis uh, site, you know. So that is something that we need to appreciate. And I saw that when I gave her this gesture of appreciation, the, the, the award, I realized she hasn't, it's possible she hasn't gotten many of the, such kind of motivation. You should have seen the way she was excited. She felt nice. Yes, she felt so nice. She was uh, practicing and uh, I could almost see her shedding tears. Philemon uh, is the captain of Gormaya. People imagine that maybe they, they get quite a bit of awards. When I gave her the token of appreciation, she, he called and you could almost tell that he was so appreciative because we don't appreciate these players enough. We don't realize the struggles they go through, the determination uh, by these players. And then the other thing I also look at is the discipline. For you to succeed in sports, you really need to be disciplined. I think, I, actually, it's to succeed in everything. <laughs> but more, more so in sports, because you see sports is talent, and talent is something people always assume that it's natural, you know, and so you can uh, do whatever you want with it. But without discipline, talent is cannot, cannot take you uh, so far. So determination, discipline, and then the skill also, uh, how talented are they. So I look at those, and uh, it's just my way and our way of just appreciating and then urging them on uh, and also more or less challenging people who have the bigger responsibility like government for example uh, like uh, uh, private sector for example they should be moving in to support uh, uh, these individuals but also these teams because it's a collective responsibility that we have uh, I think in the future we should understand sports ecosystem because sports is too big with huge potential locally and you know it's a, a rich employer not only globally but if we put mechanisms and structures and policies in place sport can be it won't be considered as a part-time exercise like it's being done home uh, what will be your advice to the government of the day in terms of what they should do to ensure that you know that comes to effect a uh, one is like i said uh, have the right policies and that creates an enabling environment for other players to to move in stakeholders uh, and private sector civil society to fix the governance governance issue is a big big uh, problem let's fix uh, support uh, federations with the capacity they need the structures that are required and uh, uh, three is to look at sports as an investment not an expense you know, we always see sports as an expense. So if, for example, Omanyala is going to run in some country, we feel like ah, we need to cough money budget. again. It's a budget <laughs> again. We don't realize that that is more. He, he's doing or more there than is just visa hitch. There is visa hitch and, <laughs> and all that. It's an investment. This is someone as an individual. He's doing something that the entire country is supposed to be doing, promoting Kenya. He's doing that using his talent and uh, skills. So see it as an investment and let's put in more in it. Rwanda is a good example of how investment in sports has also earned them a lot of returns. And lastly, is just seeing sports as part of our national development. Let's not see sports as sports. Let's see sports as part of our national development. You see, the way we budget for health, the way we budget for infrastructure, the way we budget for education, that is how we should be seeing uh, uh, our, our, our sports. So that we see it as part and parcel of our national development. So when we talk about a, a foreign exchange earners. We can't just talk about tea, horticulture, coffee, tourism. Sports has to be there. In fact, sports should be number one because Kenya has immense talent. You, you look at what is happening tomorrow. We've got the Nairobi City Marathon. I was telling someone, give it five editions. It will be considered now. People will be saying it needs to go to the majors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people, we don't need it to be called something. No, the Nairobi City Marathon. This is the second edition. After five editions, people will be like, in Africa, you need to go for the Nairobi City Marathon. 
you see what it, the majors do like to the Boston, New York, London. It's a big event that comes around and everything. But just like Kip Kano Classic, there is mm -hmm. that advocacy for yeah. it to be incorporated into the circuit. Uh -huh. But I don't want to your point is you need education. Education is the key factor that can merge all this together. You need people who are educated enough to go out there and preach this gospel and actually do the necessary for it to go. You look at when you go to the European countries, we did the Birmingham uh, World Athletics Championship. It was in Birmingham. It was hosted in a university. Mm -hmm. You go to a university, it has got all tennis courts. All the games that are in the Olympics schedule are being in the university. In that a kid knows that for me, I'm a hockey player. From the university yeah. level, this kid knows that for me, after university, I'm going professional. So, education is key. And this starts even from the education ministry. Their link with the sports has to be key for them to understand that if we link education and sports, it is going to be key. In that, when a kid is growing up, don't just think of talent. I want to be Victor Mugobe, I want to be an Angela. That's just one. Mm -hmm. But if you link education and sports, okay. where, like you look at the states where they say, if you don't get a, a three-point GPA, mm -hmm. you're not going to play. Yeah. So you put that together, and the development and the policies will flourish forever. That's true. And Maxwell, I just wanted to yes. add something small. I went to a college uh, 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 back in the U.S., and our college was uh, is actually known for basketball. Uh -huh. I mean, for education, but more for basketball. Yes. Uh, Duke University. Uh -huh. Duke generates more revenue from basketball yes. than from tuition fees. You can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. This is a top tier university, yes. but there it, it is. It is known that Duke gets more revenue from basketball than tuition fees. So people yes. can fail to pay tuition fees, but if people fail to watch, attend the games, attend the, games yeah. the school is going to collapse. Yeah. So that's how important sports is, that our sports can help us run our education system, yeah. health sector, uh, transport, and, and others. So we really need to see sports as, a, as an enabler also, yes. not just as a, as a, as a component so, of the economy that takes from us. Sports yeah. can give so much, so we need to start looking at it from that perspective. What, was, what is your take regarding commercial aspect of the game? Because if you happen to attend a, a local game with someone who is passionate about sports development, sports advocacy, they understand policies of uh, sports growth, and uh, you are with them at Nair National Stadium for a game, let's say pitting Gorma and FC Leopards. Mm -hmm. I think when they come out, they will have a lot to share because they say, first of all, stadium is not about just playing surface. Mm -hmm. And what is outside there, there is no much hype and uh, even no kids uh, in bouncing castles, mm -hmm. which means the aspect of revenue generation is, is lacking. I don't know, can, can we do something better? Yeah, yeah, I think we need to be creative, we need to be innovative in, in, in ways that we can generate uh, resources uh, for sports and with, uh, with sports. You look at uh, uh, basketball teams for, or even uh, uh, EPL, uh, those teams generate income not just from uh, uh, tickets, get tickets, they generate income from merchandise that they sell, which is quite... Uh, uh, quite huge. They generate income from maybe some of the activities they, 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 they host. So I think we, re we really need to be creative. People who have been tasked with the responsibility of taking care of our sports need to think beyond uh, gate, uh, I mean, gate charges, yes. gate, gate tickets, because that seems to be the like only you see, My friend, you attending a, food girl, a football game beating FC Leopards and Madara United, you will stay at Kuche Kuche. <laughs> 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 because there is no white cup being no, sold outside there. <laughs> the, the, the True to yeah. The, the whole point is, with the fan engagement, is usually family. Mm -hmm. I think you saw a picture True. that was trending of a dad and dad is a young kid. In uh, Safarelli, Naivash. Uh, mm -hmm. Sports engagement, for you to get eyeballs, mm -hmm. you have to curate it for the family. family yeah. Don't just curate it for... I'm a, just a gentleman going on to the game. It will mm. never work. Mm. It's just one. Of, but if you curate it in a way that I'm comfortable to come with my kid and my wife mm -hmm. to watch the game, mm -hmm. the next day I'll buy a ticket for my nephews to come and watch the game with me, you'll get iPods. And the commercial sector, that is what they want. They don't just want uh, 
just someone, just one person coming onto mm-hmm. the football stage. They just want to see is this a family event mm-hmm. that they can curate their merchandise for mm-hmm. that family event. That's so true. for the commercial sector to come into the sport, you have to look at the larger picture in that if I can get eyeballs and family eyeballs, family engagement to come into the stadium, then the commercial sector will come on to that game and it will flourish. At this point, I was almost going to say Osoro and yes. yourself should run for one of these federations. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 maybe, maybe that's not our thing. I think Osoro should do. Osoro can be good no, with are, campaigning, you, you, especially you, you, after taking <laughs> a little bit of frothy liquids. I no, think you guys have the ideas. I think uh, so, uh, part of the problem is also that people with cap- capacity, capability, and vision sometimes keep away from uh, uh, taking over some of these governance yes. structures. And I think it's very, very important that we get more able, visionary, and passionate people to run uh, these federations and uh, sports in our, in our country. Because otherwise, we'll keep leaving them to people who are not passionate, people who just want to take from it, and they're not giving, uh, giving anything. That's why. There are those people, but they are reluctant to contest for these seats because they think delegates are pre manipulated even before the voting day. You know, someone who is capable of delivering in what they seek to do, probably they need uh, delegates to understand what they are capable of doing, not necessarily by forking money. Yeah, that, 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 that's true. And of course, that is now us to blame, you know, as, as lovers of sports, but generally just elections. I think we need to start electing leaders based on their policies and based on their, on their manifestos. That's the only way we are going to get the right leaders because sports is suffering because of exactly what you're saying, yes. that sometimes we don't see people for who they are, we see them for what they give. Yes. And uh, that way we sacrifice people who have the right vision and the right capability. So if Osoro has the right vision and the, and the right skills and capability to run uh, a federation and he doesn't have resources, or he has resources but not to uh, bribe people, yes. Uh, chances of him winning will be quite uh, meaningful. Yeah, slim. Yeah, yeah. When I, when I awarded uh, uh, Philemon, guys were like, maybe you should uh, vie for a federation seat. So I was like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> because like you're saying, those guys don't listen to yeah. ideas and visions and policies. They want to know when uh, when I say as Indikisha Sarah, you know, has <laughs> caught yeah, your policy. It goes down to what you said about uh, governance. Mm-hmm. And that's why the everything goes now down to the wire here at home people use sports as a benchmark Uh, for something else yeah yeah. you want to be a chairman of something Mm -hmm. after that you want to move somewhere we don't look at sports coming in as a custodian Mm -hmm. Uh, when you are a leader you have achieved something in the private sector you've achieved something when you come in to to run for a sports federation comes be a custodian and it's not, not even a sports actually in leadership yeah when we talk about legislature you like mm, these guys are not here for us mm. you need a legislature someone who is coming on to a legislature position to be a person who is going to be a custodian of this in that what you are going there as you are going there to the legislate as a custodian to it's a public service mm, and somebody. if our leaders and everybody can think in that way we will be going somewhere else. But will, That's why we get to a scenario where politicians are buying football clubs locally, but after some time, yeah. they, they <laughs> run away. Because, you know, it, 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 it has to be attributed to the overwhelming passion you have for mm-hmm. the game, not necessarily to rise in terms of your political ambition. Yes. Because someone like Ambrose Rachel, probably if you have a conversation with him, he will open up and tell you that uh, whatever he uses that belongs to him personally, is so huge, mm-hmm. but it's because of the love for Gormaya, yeah. the passion. In as much as he has, he might have overstayed, mm-hmm. and the people who are reluctant of and sitting him because they know mm. it comes with expenses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hu- it's a huge responsibility yeah. and a huge investment for yeah. individual at the top because if a team is supposed to. Uh, turn up for a, a, a game or tournament yes. wherever and they, they no no government support no corporate support it is you as an individual they're going to look at you're yeah. the chairman man mm. this is the time for you to show us your work <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. and i think mm. in in which country overseas before you express an interest of vying for for a sporting seat you have to show what what you have on the table your 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 wealth status 
Yeah, it's the Bundesliga. When you yes. look at it, in Germany, mm. for you to be a chairman of a football club, you have to own, you, you can stand in for a debt of 15% of the club. Mm. Yeah, if the club has a debt, you go in and you say 15% is on to me. <laughs> so they know that. You get in by paying yeah. that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you cannot yeah. uh, go out. So uh, in that, they know that you have already made that money. Mm. And if you look at it, it, it's standard practice mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. In that, someone who is coming in to be a chairman of something, you are wealthy enough mm -hmm. that you don't need this. Mm -hmm. You're custodian of this. But for us now, that, that mindset has to change. Mm. That mindset has to change because you don't need someone to be ahead of a sport which he doesn't know, doesn't care about. For him, what he wants is... A yeah, they can open yeah, and and yeah, the, For him, he just wants to come in and just lynch it. Mm. Just get the money off it. And that one doesn't work for us. So, Raphael, as someone who is widely travelled, you might have come across people who whenever they get to know you, you are a Kenyan and they know of Shuja, they know of uh, Eliud Kipchoge, they know Faith Kipiegon. And talking about uh, Shuja rugby, our Kenya National Rugby Sevens team got relegated from HSBC World Seven Series. And uh, now they will be working day and night to see whether they can leapfrog and uh, bounce back. What, what do you think that is that was a, a big failure on our side, even as stakeholders of the game, not uh, doing much that could be done to ensure that you know Kenya retains its place? Because our late friend Benjamin Aimba, when he wakes up and sees Shuja is not at HSBC Seven Series, where they can probably defend Singapore Seven C One with them in 2016, mm -hmm. I think that would be something else. It's uh, quite disappointing. And yes, I, I, I think. What we don't realize that in this part of the world, and Kenya in particular, these players succeed not necessarily because of the support given to yes. them, but just because of their individual uh, you know, passion yes. and determination. And it shouldn't be like that. I think they're already giving so much by, by offering their talent, providing their skills to be in, uh, in the field. I think we need to provide an enabling environment and to motivate and support them and provide the necessary uh, facilities that are required. If you look at most players truly in different uh, uh, sports, uh, they don't get that kind of uh, support. Uh, the other day I was it's reading... It's their own total sacrifice. It's their own total sacrifice. The other day I was reading uh, 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 Omanyala, uh, in the papers Omanyala was saying how he travels sometimes alone. <laughs> no nutritionist, no coach, no physio. No, no physio, no nothing. And imagine you travel, and that means what he did say uh, perhaps is that he travels economy and on arrival is supposed to be uh, on the pitch uh, running. W what a huge sacrifice. Shuja, isn't it the, the same team we saw some time back fundraising for air tickets to go through for a, social media? Through Twitter. social media to go for a tournament to represent the country. this country. You know, not benchmarking and to bring represent, glory back home. And bring glory back home. And not just glory. Market it to an extent that people will know Kenya. Now, I, I, you go to places, and if you say you are Kenyan, the first thing you ask, do you run? Or do you, do you know Okutoi? Yes. Or do you know so-and-so? Uh, uh, sport. It means that sport is marketing Kenya in ways that uh, are unimaginable or, or we haven't realized. So it's a failure on part of the government, but it's a failure also on part of all the stakeholders, including the federations, including corporates, including civil society, include all of us as individuals, because we are supposed to really invest in these sports. When you go to the stadium, it's really not just about supporting the team, it's also about growing sports. So that's why we need to find a way of, I mean, instead of um, sometimes, like you are saying, kupiga shere elsewhere, <laughs> without mentioning Osoro, <laughs> you need to be uh, in the stadium because that contribution, that ticket that you see is 100, 200 or 500 shillings is going to go a long way, of course, if those resources are well managed to support these teams. It will take quite a bit of sacrifice for Kenya rugby to get to where they were uh, a few years ago because unless we put in the right mechanisms and infrastructures to support these players, to support uh, these teams, it will be very, very difficult. So we've really, really failed as a country and uh, various uh, uh, components of, uh, of this country. Yeah. I think it was also a major undoing on the side of Kenya Tourism Board and uh, General Minister of Tourism because they are also supposed to use our sportsmen and women for advertising the country internationally.
You remember that Naomi Campbell noise? <laughs> ah, yeah, yes, yes, yes yeah. <laughs> And when we have the likes of Angelo Kutoi, yeah, yeah. Victor Wanyama, Eliud mm. Kipchoge, Mm. I think going forward, probably this country will do better because we've seen the commitment shown by President William Ruto mm -hmm. in rally. The other day, he attended Mashemeji Dabi yes. at Nyaya National Stadium mm -hmm. alongside former PM and mm -hmm. the two topmost leaders uh, embracing the game. Can we treat that as a statement? Mm. Yes, you can treat it as a statement, but uh, the understanding of it can be connoted differently in the people understanding it but from the ministry perspective of how you are going to market the country as a sports destination uh, i think it has worked you look at uh, we, we got uh, the safari rally coming back into the country that was a goodwill from the government uh, we've got the european tour the golf european tour coming on to the country Today we've got the Nairobi City Marathon going on, we've got the Kipkeino Classic going on now. It is about now how the government can maximize on that to get the best profit, the, the best benefits of those uh, sports events that are coming on to the country. And for them to come into that, they now need to understand these conversations that are happening inside the sport. They need to be there. When you land at JKIA, you don't see a, a billboard of value. Mm -hmm. You don't see a billboard of faith, keep here going. You don't see a billboard of... Uh, remember in 2012 when Rhodesia broke the 800 meters uh, record, uh, the Britons... When in they, London. Yeah, the Britons when they are landing in Kenya, the JKIA, they thought that Rhodesia is really massive, is mm -hmm. a big person in Kenya. But they land at the JKI and they don't see even a poster. Then they get surprised. Actually, Kumbe, yeah. Kumbe Mofara is bigger than Rudisha. I saw that in Boston, eh? yeah. where they normally have Boston Marathon. Yes. The late Wanjiro yes. is yes. Oh, yeah. such a figure there, yeah. man. Yeah. In fact, if you're a Kenyan and you, you don't know Wanjiro, you'll, yeah. be, you'll be chased from. <laughs> but yet here, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. nothing. There's yeah. nothing yeah. to show yeah. that... Uh, uh, I he's, think, uh, I, I know that when they did that uh, mural of uh, Eliud, mm -hmm. uh, people saw that mural of Eliud, that mural of uh, faith, now people will start appreciating that. Mm -hmm. In that, as a, now the tourism and everything appreciate those figures, put them outside there for people to see. In that, I don't think there's a marathon that a Kenya has not won. You go to Paris, you go to New York, you go to Boston, Chicago, London, mm. Berlin. Like, Eliud has won Berlin and everything. The moment you land in Berlin and you talk of Eliud, it's a big thing. Mm. But here at home, the people know how massive mm. Eliud is outside there for us to appreciate him. Wow, this is the conversation we can have even until evening hours of the day because it can never come to an end when you're talking about sports policies, structures, mechanisms that are aimed at, you know, getting our game to another level and it's been a pleasure doing this with this gentleman in studio rafael less than a minute your parting shot what are your final submissions what should we do let's let's invest in sports let's make sports part of our national development let's fix poor governance let's have the right policies but most importantly let's appreciate what our sportsmen and women are doing so let's inspire them let's motivate them and let's give them the support that they need to continue doing what they are uh, they are doing that is so important and this calls for collective responsibility individuals uh, in whichever way and form you can support it please do uh, civil society media most importantly private sector and uh, government we really need to give sports the backing that it requires Wow, good stuff. Rafael Obonio joining us this particular afternoon to share his excellent insights regarding sports development in the country. He's a reputable public uh, policy analyst and he wear many hats indeed. Uh, so much away from sports, which my friend told me mm -hmm. this particular morning, but I think I'm just learning something different that he also has got overwhelming uh, passion and love for the game. And it's been a pleasure doing this every Saturday. One, two, three, touchline, Maxwell Wasik alongside my long-time ally, uh, Robert Osoro, and uh, of course the conversation continues even as we come to an end of this program. Hashtag touchline Y254 to Asike Maxwell at Mirumbi Osoro. I think I've gotten it right. <laughs> 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 oh, to everyone who got involved in making this a success led by Beatrice, Abdul Razak, uh, 
Faith and Wells, Stacy, Mandy. <laughs> oh, I think the list is endless. <laughs> it's been a pleasure doing this with these people and, uh, you know, have a nice weekend and indeed a sporting one. Tomorrow is Nairobi County Marathon, right? Yeah. I think we will stay tuned to it. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. Enjoy the weekend.